Hello, good afternoon. I'm Nick Vidal, I'm the room monitor. If you guys need any help, please let me know. Um, I'm going to introduce you Vadim from Ukraine. He's going to give us a talk about uh, Backbone JS and Drupal 7 and 8. So, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome on the Backbone GS session. Um, my name is Vadim, and I'm lead developer in Trellon. Uh, currently, I'm writing a book for a packed publishing and about Backbone GS. And it's not ready yet, but it's on the final drafts, and I hope it will be published soon. And I probably can have some discounts for a Drupal Con attendees, so just uh, email me or uh, leave business card. I will like to uh, share this voucher with you. And so let's start. Uh, do you remember those uh, lovely 90s where JavaScript was used? Just um, there are not so many uh, JavaScript actually was there, like uh, some scripts that validate in forms and drop in alert box if something filled not properly. So this is how it was used in the uh, early 90s. And um, in 1995, uh, actually I started to develop websites in 1999, and there were like lots of websites on the Merry Christmas Eve with the snows floating over the screen. If you remember it, it was cool. <laughs> and this is how JavaScript was used. And then in 2000, Microsoft invented XML HTTP request and uh, it actually um, allowed to do Ajax, but the word Ajax we had been known um, in five years later. And in 1998, people actually was doing the same with iframes. Like you can do uh, Ajax call with iframe. In 2006, uh, the world first have seen jQuery. It was awesome. It uh, allowed to use CSS selectors for traversing uh, document object module, and do event handling, perform AJAX, make animations, and achieve compatibility with all browsers. And by the way, um, it's going to be um, jQuery conference in Portland next month in June 13 and 14. So um, it's maybe if you're staying here, that could be a reason to stay and come to this conference. And what are we having in 2013? Um, so many new scenes have appeared during recent years. Let's get familiar with them. So uh, now we have HTML5, and it provides lots of cool features, like uh, local storage. If you enable local storage, you can uh, store the data even if there is no internet connection with a server. And even more cool thing that um, if you write a special script, you can store data there. And when there is internet connection with a server, this data will be automatically synchronized um, with a the server. Uh, there is also push state. Uh, push state is a technology that allows to control browser history and browser URLs before uh, for making um, for changing URLs, we need to use the hash character. And this hash character um, was almost in any AJAX application. It, it was difficult to share this thing. To, uh, it was difficult for search, engine uh, en search engines to um, get the link with this character and to index it, because um, they thought that it was a single page. And now uh, it's possible to have a completely separate, convenient URL how it is uh, used for typical websites, and it brings more features to search engine optimization. And also, um, there are um, more new JavaScript templating engines, like a Moustache.js or even Twig. So Twig, it's a um, um, templating engine that is now being added in a Drupal 8. It's uh, in the Twig sandbox. And actually, um, the tweak could be processed by JavaScript too. So, and there is also a representative state transfer, which is uh, REST. So the REST 
um, allows to communicate between client and the server over H HTTP um, protocol. And um, it's actually a cool thing. So uh, it, with the rest, it makes possible that server takes care about data and client application takes care about rendering. It, so client and server are completely independent. They all only communicate through the rest. And we are going to cover in this session all of this. Uh, so let's uh, speak about JavaScript client evolution, how it was evolved uh, during r recent years. First, um, JavaScript clients became more complex and they able to do more complex things. And second, um, Uh, it's happening scene to see client transitions. So uh, the clients contains business logic, do rendering, and uh, actually do some other cool stuff. Uh, for example, um, it's not actually new. Like, uh, for example, uh, in the past, we have Unix, and uh, people were connecting to the uh, big machine called mainframe through the terminals. And those terminals was like a um, thin clients. And then um, personal computer appears. It's like a um, moving from a scene to seek. And then again, we have a new transition uh, from the client, uh, from the desktop application to the web. It's again, um, browser was a thin client to, and server was a seek and could be able to process all um, user requests. And now we are having another transition from uh, seek to seek to sin. Oh, sorry, from sin to seek. So uh, right now it's possible to create a JavaScript application uh, that could sit in the browser. It could be a browser uh, extension, and it could do whatever um, it can and synchronize with the server only in uh, during if there is internet connection. Also. Um, uh, browsers became more performance, and now JavaScript is being processed in 10 times faster than like 10 years ago. But there are still some problems. Right now, uh, typical AJAX code looks like this. So here we do uh, like uh, AJAX request, DOM traversing, event handling, uh, we also process some templates. Hopefully we are not seeing HTML code here, but many scripts contain such thing. And let's speak about AJAX in Drupal. Well, actually, have you ever seen any JavaScript code um, when dealing with AJAX? Um, there are like, uh, Eha, um, there are forum API, and you can, you are defining AJAX in the PHP array, that ridiculous. And let's do things properly. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, like we may uh, use JavaScript when it is intended to be used. And there is a good solution, meet backbone GS. So, <laughs> so um, Backbone.js was created in 2010 by Jeremy Ashkenaz. Uh, he's also known for a coffee script. Uh, Backbone.js is based on the underscore JS framework. Uh, this framework allows to do some manipulation with arrays, objects, provide event handling, and many other cool things. And Backbone.js requires jQuery or Zepto. If you heard about Zepto, or if not, I will say. So Zepto is 99% um, compatible with jQuery library, but it is uh, more light, and it does not uh, uh, take much space. It loads and works very fast, but uh, it uh, works only in the modern browsers. And let's speak about Backbone JS advantages. Uh, first, it's minimalistic. It could be integrated to any front-end and non-front-end front framework. It's modular, and there are about uh, 100 extensions uh, 
available extensions on the GitHub. It has perfect object-oriented design, so it's quite easy to extend and write your extension. And there is a good community. Actually, about 90% of my uh, request on the GitHub was uh, answered, and I found the community very good, growing, and it's not uh, as much big as a Drupal, but it's also cool. So the things you should know about Backbone.js that it's not only one. There are lots of um, competitors, and <coughs> you may want uh, want uh, you may wa uh, want to know uh, why uh, Backbone.js. So look at this slide. Uh, just this slide describes how new <coughs> framework appears. So if somebody wants to create a new framework that covers all standards, all existing standards. He decided to do it and do it, and then new framework appeared. But Backbone was one of the first um, frameworks uh, that MVC, Drup, uh, MVC JavaScript, and there are now about 100 extensions. So if there is something not in core, uh, you probably might find something um, as an extension. So uh, there are good examples of the usage of Backbone JS. Uh, Groupon now uh, find that it is very um, good for building AX heavily web applications. And the more exciting thing that uh, they found that the learning curve of the Backbone.js is very great. So, and they build um, their working prototype, uh, a working product, the first prototype in two weeks. Amazing. Uh, first Square also uses uh, Backbone.js for uh, first, first Square entities and uh, they are find it very extendable, and they have lots of uh, own extensions that is used with Foursquare. Uh, LinkedIn Mobile uses Backbone GS um, for their mobile website, and they are very happy. They have heavily actually websites uh, rendering on the client side, and this is all done by Backbone GS. Um, also, Airbnb uh, uses it, and they actually use it with Node.js on the server and. They created their own library called Render. And there are lots of examples of uh, who and how um, uh, uses Backbone.js. So let's start to learn how to do application with it. So there are some basics, uh, like drum model. Um, model contains data and a business logic. Uh, collection is a set of the models that can uh, be processed in a loop or uh, some filtering or certain to be performed for the collection. Uh, view renders a collection and the template is um, used to be used for separating HTML from the JavaScript. There is also, there is also a router um, which is similar to um, hook menu in Drupal. It provides some uh, passes, passes and the callbacks. It also allows to um, um, process parameters. And history, it's a global object. It's only one in Backbone. It uh, stores the current, um, the current router. And it also controls over the changes in the URL. There are also events. Um, events are provided by the underscore JS and mixed with almost any backbone object. Um, events allows to objects to define own events or to handle events from the other objects. So here you see a different a difference of MVC from the backbone JS. Uh, in MVC, um, users see what's view has been rendered and can um, use website, which is handled by controller, which manipulates over models and collections. If the model and collections are changed, then view is updated and shows new picture to the user. Also, model can store data um, inside and synchronize it with the storage. Um, in Backbone JS, the things are very similar, but the main difference is that view uh, there is no controller. Uh, controller is separated and some of the parts is in view and some of the parts are in router. 
Uh, so in Backbone.js, uh, you uh, listens to model changes and updates um, HTML and DOM tree. And also it listens to uh, changes from the DOM, like uh, user events, and then updates models. Also, uh, like in MVC, um, models are synchronized with the storage. Currently in uh, Backbone, uh, REST is used, but you can actually override so any data provider can be used. And also there is a router which intercepts changes in the URL and shows appropriate view. So um, the models are typically um, updated in the view or router. So in the view, they are typically um, written to the server, and in the routers, they are typically fetched from the server. So let's uh, see some demo. I'm going to show you a simple to-do application. There are uh, many implementation of this application in different frameworks, like here is, uh, we have um, several to-dos I've added. I can add some new, like set up, set up Drupal website, also configure content type, uh, also, configure views. Yeah. Oh, there is a typo. I can change it by double click and then press enter again. So if something is already done, just click in checkbox. There is a way how to delete. All clear completed. So it's a simple example uh, of the, this application. If I open it in the new tab, I will see the same result, and it completely stores data in, in the browser storage. So um, actually, uh, it could store in the server or synchronize it with the server. And let's go back to our presentation. Ah, one, one more thing to add. So this all, uh, each line uh, is there. Um, div or table row, I'm not sure, but it represents a model. So the model um, forms a collection. And when I add something, I'm um, creating a new model, adding to collection, and then uh, Backbone intercepts this and adds new row to this table. Let's now um, go to, um, oh, sorry. Something. Not sure. Uh -oh. I just will open you presentation. Something's going wrong. Sorry, I just need to fix it. Don't know what happened here, but. Okay. Yeah, so hopefully we are back. So this is an example that shows how um, 
um, we can what we can do with Backbone JS, and we are going to investigate how to do the same. Actually, it's not just a table; it's full of controllers, views, and uh, models. So, as we said, each row um, is a view, each row is a model, and the whole table is also a view and a collection. Uh, collections are bound to uh, and models are bound to views. So this table shows some simple items. Let's um, define model and the collection. Here how we can do it. Um, we extend our model from the backbone model, um, add some new function as calculate amount that gets a price and a quantity and returns it to the user also we are creating um, our own collection and um, define that which model should to be used with this collection. Then we defined the view to render the model. We extend it from the default bag one view. We are um, defining a tag name, which is tr, like a table row. Also, we can define template of entire of the row. Currently, we are getting it from the HTML um, file. Uh, it could be stored in the body or in the header. Um, we are doing it with jQuery. And we are using underscore to load the collection inside Backbone. And then we can use it. Then we can render it. In the render method, we are uh, getting data from the model uh, in JSON. Uh, and then we are adding new properties uh, JSON, like amount, which we are calculating, and then we are rendering it with a template and setting it as HTML of the element. If you see that we are using this.l, uh, which is a current LML element associated with a table row, it is created automatically when we are creating a new view. And this is how um, we are defining a view to render a table. We are defining a tag name. We are getting a template of for the table, which contains only empty table with a uh, table headers. And there is a render method, which shows this table, um, assign the template to the HTML of the current element, which is table. And also, you are seeing that we are using um, underscore dot each method, which is a loop. We are making a loop for uh, a models inside the collection and then appending a model into the table. We are running a speci sp special method called append. Uh, in the append method, we just create new, um, new view, new sub-view for uh, the model and pass model inside. And then we get an we are rendering it, get an element, and appending this element to the to the whole table. Also, we should to define our templates inside index.php. So this is how templates look. Uh, if you see that we have ID specified and uh, table um, template for the table is just containing uh, table headers and uh, row template containing a data we are rendering. Like uh, this is specific underscore um, syntax, but we can actually use our any of the templating tool. Also, the last step is where we need to create a collection and initialize it with values like description, price, quantity, and then we are. Uh, create a new view for this table and assigning it to the HTML body. That's all. But there are also some cool things like we can bind model to the view, which means if the model is updated, the view gets updated automatically. We can also create two-way binding. That means that if we have um, input elements to enter the data, when the user inputs it, then it will automatically update model properties. And if there are any other views which deals with the same model, it will uh, update the view automatically. So 
And it's a very cool scene. There, are con there are also can be a forums, layouts, which manage views. Um, we can speak about router and other templating engines. So this is how we can bind model to a view. We need to add initialize uh, function to our um, view for the model, where we are listening to model events such as destroy and change. If we are uh, getting destroy event, then we are um, calling a method of the view remove, which removes view, uh, frees all memory allocated, and also removes a view element from the document object model. Also, we add initialize method to the view for the rendering um, collection where we listen to add event. So if there is new collections, uh, new models have been added to the collection, we are running append method that we already defined. There could be other uh, events handling other ways to, do, to deal with this, but um, this is just an example. There is how two way, two way bindings occurs. So we are defining uh, bindings property in invoice item form view. This is a view for a specific model. Uh, the keys are uh, uh, jQuery selectors and the values are a model properties. Also, what else we need to do is to uh, run stickit method, which will um, automatically bind and that's all. Um, but I forget to say that we need to use Backbone Sticking extension for this. It's not in the Backbone core, just extension to download and to include it in your project, and that's all. Also, there is a way how to deal with uh, forms. Um, the forms are can be difficult uh, to create without this extension, but with it, it's um, easy, like in Drupal. Backbone Forms extension is some, somehow similar to uh, Form API. We can define um, form fields, form uh, set the form type, set options, set validators, set submit method, and we are defining it in the model. And what else we need to do is to create this model and then uh, create new instance of backbone form and pass this model and render this form. So actually backbone form is uh, inherited from the backbone view. So it's used in a similar way. But we are not doing entire of it. It just takes care about it automatically. The router. Uh, the router is very similar to hook menu in Drupal and we are defining routes the routes is the URLs. It can contain parameters. If you write a semicolon and the parameter name, that will uh, take this parameter from the URL and will pass it to the callback, which is defined as a value. And this is how it is done. Um, callbacks are also defined as part of this object. So some other cool things. Um, I'm describing in Backbone JS cookbook, so I hope it will be available soon. Just need to complete the final chapter, yeah, and maybe next month or in a couple of months. Yeah. So let's speak about a, Drup a Backbone in a Drupal. So I have introduced you to this Backbone, and now it's time to understand how uh, Backbone inters can be used in a Drupal. So there are different ways. A bootstrapping method, we saw this technique above, where we um, defined our uh, created uh, defined our data data in JavaScript, and we just uh, said that we are creating a new collection and passed all data in it. This is how we can do it with Drupal. We can uh, make um, like JavaScript and uh, pass those data as um, in the settings. If you know there is. Uh, Dru um, Drupal add JS function that allows to um, add JavaScript and also it allows to add settings. So th those settings could be uh, data that we could later use in, in the R script to initialize our objects. But it's maybe a difficult way to do. And there are also um, 
uh, representative state transfer method, which is a REST. It's very cool. Um, it allows to um, communicate with a Drupal over HTTP in AJAX. And in Drupal, on the Drupal side, we need to install services module or RESTful web services module. Um, it's very easy to configure them. And the other way, I, I will speak about uh, this method later. And the other way is Backbone.js module. It also deals with the REST and AJAX, but it already pre-configured, so you don't need to install this. Uh, actually, you need to install this module, but uh, it will do most of the job for you and will provide uh, some useful classes to, to the Backbone. So the REST. Um, REST is allows to, um, as I said, to request um, server. And you could use the post, get, put, delete request, which can do appropriate um, um, functionality. For example, po post can create new item in the collection, uh, get can um, list all the collections or retrieve specific model from the collection, uh, put can replace the whole entire of the collection or replace the content of the um, model. And uh, delete, I can delete and the collection or delete specific model from it. So um, um, at, this, at the top you see URLs uh, which, uh, example URLs to access the REST resource. The resource can be a multiple, which is a collection, or it can be single as a, as a model, which is the element of the collection. So this is how REST works in the backbone. You are defining your model, and in model you can override, but you don't need to do, but you can override ID attribute. For example, if you are working with a MongoDB, then the attribute is like um, underscore ID. In Drupal, it can be NID or something else. Uh, you, can, um, you should define the URL root, which is a root to the uh, resource of the collection, for example, um, Drupal use it as a part to access the whole URL. It adds uh, some um, ID to the end of the route, but if you don't want to use URL route, you can define the whole path to the model with a URL method, a URL keyword. And you also should define um, define the collection uh, and define the URL uh, key. It can be a function or a value. It just um, URL to access the whole collection, whole resource. In um, Backbone JS, you could use following methods to deal with this. For example, with uh, you can um, use fetch module of the model. It fetches data from the server, and uh, if you're done so, it can automatically update the whatever on the screen, which is um, bind with this model. And there is also a method to save and destroy the model, delete from the collection. If you're working uh, with collections, so you can fetch the whole collection. It means several models. Uh, some REST servers allows to pass additional parameters in the URL, so you can filter or apply sorting. Uh, you can also add specific models to a collection or remove, or remove them. And with Backbone.js module, you don't need to do all of this. Um, it was created by Essen Win, and it provides models and collection already built to use this Drupal, and it is via REST. So um, you can use users, nodes, commands from the JavaScript, and uh, you can even access the views of nodes. It's very cool. I will show you. And it works both with services and the RESTful web services module. And here is how we can access to uh, node view. So um, the Drupal view is a bit different from the Backbone view, so don't confuse it. Uh, so um, Backbone module uh, provides a collection called node view, which is extended from the basic collection. And you can uh, create it 
on you can create instance and to specify the view name and also when you are doing fetch on if there is success we are just uh, printing the entire of the collection to the uh, browser but you have not seen any resource definition or any um, other work it just automatically um, take the Drupal view and transform in the backbone collection. So this model is quite new, and uh, but the in plans in the their roadmap they will support uh, bootstrapping and also will do better view support. So I guess it will be more entities. Also, they're going to introduce in place content editing for. Uh, Drupal 7 and provide some drag and group and maybe there will be a specific Drupal 8 version. By the way, uh, do you know how a Drupal is, um, Drupal 8, uh, how is intersected with the backbone? I mean, uh, the backbone JS is now in core in the Drupal 8 uh, and there are good examples. Uh, it's used for in-place content editing, I will show you. It's also will be used for the layouts. It's a new initiative, which is um, mainly developed um, in the Spark distribution. There will be a mobile preview bar. It's now available in the Spark distribution. And there can be any other something that will be and change the user experience in Drupal 8. So right now, Spark is a separate distribution uh, that uh, like experimental platform and some cool thing that is that are working there, they are transferred to the Drupal core, like in-place editing. Let me show you, for example, some Drupal 8 functionality. So here is a simple Drupal 8 website. It looks almost the same. It's just in development now. And we can here see uh, menu items, we can do quick edit. So I have added some content, which is context, and I can click here and update the fields directly, not going to the edit page. And uh, there is no need to reload, it automatically updated. And this is how uh, things could be edited in Drupal 8. It's very useful, and I think it's um, in Spark distribution, it uh, looks a bit more clear, but it just, you know, that Drupal 8 is now being development and it's going to be a code sprint soon, so yeah. Uh, this is one of the example. So let me get back to the slides. And one more thing I want to speak about, it's um, in the Drupal 8, there is a web services initiative, uh, which means that REST in core, so, um, and in Drupal 8, they use Symfony system to uh, create storage controllers, which are uh, allows to access a database and provide with a classes and provide with a method. It's like a storage controllers, it's like a separate classes. And they ha they can be um, exposed to the rest. So actually by default they are exposed and you can access, if you have a login with your rest, you can access any storage controllers. Storage control can be like entities, some data, it could be also access controllers or anything else. And the tweak, the tweak is in core, uh, almost in core. Actually, it is a tweak sandbox. And if it is work out, maybe on this code sprint, it will be committed to the core. And um, it's much more powerful templating engine. But the funny thing is that there is um, JavaScript implementation for a tweak. And just in, let's understand how the data flows in the um, backbone JS. So there is a database and which provides data to the access controllers and storage controllers, which are used by the render controllers and form controllers, which renders those data. And they use in Twig templates to uh, render them and output to the browser. Let's um, see, so if you are using REST, 
So this storage controller are exposed to the as a RESTful service and can be accessed by the backbone application you are writing on. And the funny thing is that probably it's just let's imagine if you could reuse Drupal uh, templates, like a tweak templates, it would be fun. So you, you can make your own application that uses some templates already written for the Drupal. It maybe will be hard to do, but it's just per, um, imagination. So you can even do mobile application or even more. Uh, you can do uh, native applications that will work on Android or um, iPhone. With a tool such as PhoneGap or Trigger.io, it's possible to create mobile application from CSS, JavaScript, and HTML. So if you are using Backbone, you just can um, access data via REST and then render it with Twig. And that will be your application. You are building it with PhoneGap and Trigger and upload somewhere to the App Store or Android Market. Yeah, so yeah, this is my session and I would like to hear questions from you. If you have a question, I hope you have. Please stand in the line and ask the microphone. Yeah, so any questions? Everything understood or everything not understood? <laughs> yeah, please. Uh. So my question would be, let's say we're building a, a backbone app, which yeah. is a catalog. So it's really important that it would be indexed by Google. Yeah. Is there a good standard way how to make our backbone app uh, more SEO friendly? Yeah, I hope so. So I see the way how you can do it. Um, now, right now, there are possible to use standard URLs, and uh, your server can just um, see if it's a search engine. If the IP address is search engine, then you can um, output just HTML to this, and in the index file, you can output links, or maybe uh, just. I, I think you just need to create um, maybe. A files like a robots files for a search engines and to add the pages you want it to be indexed and when the search engine comes you just need to make sure you as output also pure HTML I, I hope it would work so basically we're serving different content for uh, first for Search engine spiders? Yeah, I, I'm not sure how um, smart search engines are if they are able to process JavaScript. But um, if like if they are not, they are typically seen a blank page. And if you are able to uh, show uh, HTML instead, so they can index, it will be great. Maybe uh, it's possible, yeah, I know it's possible to backbone to I work with a Node.js if it's on a server, so um, maybe there can be a way to switch between server and the client implementation. So you are rendering not on the client, uh, on the server, if um, any search engine um, spider comes to the page. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah. How do you... Have you found a way to not have to duplicate your form API rules in both backbone.js and on the Drupal side? Because you were pointing out that you can add Mr., Mrs., and um, Miss as like allowable. Yeah. Can you, does, have you figured out a way to combine that with oh, what comes out of Drupal? It's actually a great question. So yeah, I, I need this to be done. So um, maybe with some mapper function that can, but actually it's very similar. So there are like uh, input boxes, select boxes, um, but I'm not sure about validation, but I think it's quite possible to just build a, a form from the form API if it's a simple form, yeah. It's just need to, to work and get deep in this. 
Okay, and can you give a practical, like, have you tried services and REST WS? Because I've tried to do Backbone with these, and I, I just run into problems, oh, especially because really? you have to go and figure out and form API, like, what it's expecting, like, date fields, for mm -hmm. example, would be a really hard one. Oh, so f for notes, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I actually used um, a Backbone module. I, I don't think they there are some problems here, and I see uh, very good examples. But if you are dealing with a date, uh, I had similar problem you are talking about with the MongoDB. So uh, it's actually a MongoLab, which is a RESTful service uh, of a MongoDB, um, and uh, the dates are in stored in the different format. So uh, when you are um, fetching data. Uh, there is a way how to alter the behavior, so you are you can um, rewrite what is get from the server. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. <coughs> See, yeah, uh, you mentioned that uh, you can save data uh, on the browser. Uh, yeah. You actually showed us uh, on the demo. Yeah. Um, then you also mentioned that you could later sync that back uh, with the server. Yeah. Is there anything that helps that? Yeah, of course. So let me uh, go to the first slides. There is a link where there are lots of, oh, here it is. Mm. So I just need to connect to the internet. Yeah, so um, I think it's uh, the presentation is available online. So if you click on this link, you will go to the list of the Backbone extensions. And if you go to the storage section, there are about more than 10 extensions that um, allows to work with different storage engines. And there are Web SQL, local storage. And I think this extension is called. Um, Something like a local storage sync, or mm. yeah, it, it's very. I, I have tried it, and I'm writing, uh, including a, chap, um, a recipe in, in my book, and it works very well. Okay, thank you. Oh, no problem. Hi, I arrived a little late, so par apologies if this was in your presentation. Um, do you have examples of a single page app that uses Drupal as the back end and Backbone as the front end? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, there is example, um, if you uh, go to the Backbone project, mm -hmm. there, there is a link on the example. And also, um, uh, it's quite cool module. And uh, it uh, uses, I think it's somewhere on the GitHub, but there should be a link on the, on the model page where um, application connects to the uh, Drupal via Backbone module, and it's a kind of um, to-do application. Okay. Any, anything that's in um, wrapped in PhoneGap or anything that's in a store? Uh, we're, still, we're still sort of in the we, very early stages of this kind of integration. Not, not with Backbone, but um, in my company, we have uh, been developed uh, application which are wrapped in the PhoneGap, and now it's been on the uh, final st steps of Mm, add into the App Store. I think it's already added. And, and yeah. uses Drupal. Yeah, for it the uses data? Drupal. Yeah, there is a, a, a Mag module, uh, M A G, like a mobile app generator. Uh, last DrupalCon, there are, mm, were a couple of sessions and the DrupalCon um, London. Oh, sorry, DrupalCon Munich. There was a session about mobile app generator. I was speaking with the Fabian and. Um, so your app, what what framework does it use on the? Yeah, front PhoneGap. Uh, but ju no, just what, what just JavaScript framework? Ah, uh, no JavaScript framework. Just jQuery and jQuery Mobile. Oh, jQuery Mobile. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so there's not real any good examples yet out there, then, is there? Uh, I hope it will be. But not yet. Not yet. No. Okay. And then, so where does Node Node.js fit into all? Yeah. The, the equation. So, uh, what is the question? So if you have Drupal mm -hmm. on your back end, backbone. 
uh, it's a Node client JS. side. But well, yeah, would you need Node.js or does it fit in there as, in any way? No. Uh, if you have a, a backbone JS on the client side, you don't need any JS. Just well, well, Node.js is server side, right? So yeah. Yeah, it's server side. So if so you typically want, you'd use Node.js with backbone JS. Uh, so it's in, can you use Node.js, backbone JS, and Drupal in some capacity? Or is there I, no need I'm, for I'm, I'm really there is no use cases for, for this. Not, okay. All right, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Are there any more questions? Okay, thank you, Vadim. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs>